What's up, everybody? Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net. And behind me, you can see a beautiful 1987 Cadillac Brome de Elegance. De Elegance. It's a gorgeous 62,000 mile car. I'm super excited to bring you again on the channel here. Again, that means I've sold it once before, and I'm here to sell it again. I'm gonna show you a walk around video of this car, show you the inside, take it for a spin. I'm even gonna show you the bottom of it, put it up on the lift, tell you all about it. My name is Anthony, let's get into the video. And here she is, beautiful autumn maple fire mist over carmine red leather, 1987 Cadillac Brome de Elegance. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous example that uh, I had the pleasure of rehoming and selling back four years ago, almost to the day. Uh, uh, Papa Bay and I, on one of our earlier specialty motor car adventures, uh, years ago, you can go back in the archives and check out the video. It's actually kind of crazy, and I almost cringe a little bit <laughs> listening to myself from four years ago. Um, I guess how far I've come in four years. Uh, but this is a beautiful 87 that Papa Bear and I, back then, went up to Vermont to rescue this car. Uh, when I say rescue, I mean go to, like, almost Canada, where Cadillac Bromes should not exist because it was way too rocky and muddy and dirty and beautiful cars like this shouldn't be up there <laughs> forgive me anybody who's up there that has beautiful cars but essentially that's why i bought this car uh because the owner which was get out of here mosquito which was the original owner's son brought this car from connecticut it was his parents car and brought it up to northern vermont and even he realized this car is way too nice to be up here. Um, so if you really want some entertainment, maybe go back to the archives to check out and see that video. Uh, but I essentially sold this car to a local customer, a great local customer. And I never thought I'd see the day that this car would ever become available again. Uh, just because he loved this car so much, cherished it. But life happens and, you know, things change. And here she is. So we're looking for the, uh, the most loving, caring, cherishing a home for this 1987 Brome. Because Frank absolutely adored this car. Um, he bought it from me four years ago with 57,000 miles. I want to say it was just about ready to clock over at 58. And now it's got a little over 62,000 miles. Um, and it's funny, when I posted this on my Facebook page that this car was coming in, a lot of people, local people, knew whose car this was. Uh, why? Because Frank loved this car. He posted pictures of it all the time. Anytime he took it out, he always wiped it down. Even somebody commented, isn't that the guy who used to wax that car like seven times every time he took it out? Yeah, that's Frank. Frank cherished this car. So that's why we need to find a loving home. Uh, Autumn Maple Fire Mist matching beautiful original vinyl top uh dark or actually i think it's just called carmine red leather interior beautiful stainless beautiful chrome beautiful bright work all the way around this car is just absolutely gorgeous i'm excited to do another video on it now you can see um obviously the car is in phenomenal shape and it's you almost say to yourself well how how could you do anything better to better this car? Well, Frank did find a few things to do to better the uh, overall condition, including a brand new, new old stock hood ornament. Uh, he also put the stainless uh, vent shades on the windows. Those are brand new as well. Uh, those weren't on the car when I sold it. And then I believe he also replaced the trunk lock. So that's nice and bright. I don't think they were really bad before, but Frank is just a very particular guy and he likes it the way he likes it. The other thing he did was on the inside, which normally I wouldn't get out of here, mosquito. Normally I wouldn't care for audio upgrades, uh, but I have to say this one I think is the coolest audio upgrade you could do aftermarket audio upgrade for a car like this. So we're going to go around this car, going to show you some of the fine details of it, point out just a few minor flaws with this car. Uh, then we're going to show you the inside, take it for a spin. We'll start up front here. You can see beautiful chrome, the beautiful paint on it. It does have a couple stains. I've seen this before on a couple 
lacquer cars. Now this is a lacquer car, so uh, the Autumn Maple Fire Mist was an upgraded color. And it's an absolutely sharp, sharp color. And the beautiful paint job on this car is in phenomenal shape from the factory. You can see it's got a beautiful gloss. You can see that Autumn Maple paint. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but like I said over here, there's a couple little spots in the paint where you can see almost like a staining of some type. Uh, nothing crazy. A little chip right there on the leading edge of the hood. Like I said, brand new hood ornament. A couple other little chips right there on the hood. Uh, you know, that's a little stray bug mark there. I think there was another guy right there. Uh, but overall, paint quality on the hood is good. Nice, beautiful autumn maple fire mist paint. Come around this side here. You can see the reflection. Absolutely beautiful. Two little chips there. One thing I remember about autumn maple fire mist whenever I get it is it does seem to be a color that chips easily. And, you know, all these little random chips appear, like I just pointed out here. Um, even. Uh, cars that I've had in the past, like you can see like that one there and there. These little random guys, nice front fillers, nice stainless. The bumper rub strips are beautiful. Chrome is nice on the car. Cornering lights are nice and clear. Has the quad headlight design from 1980 to 89. Nice bright work on the front bumper. Egg crate grill for 87 and 88. I believe 81 also, then 89, they change it to the, like the 1992 style grill. Beautiful bright work around there. Come back down this side here. Uh, when I sold them this car uh, back in 19, I did put new tires on it. So these are um, four, five year old uh, Mile Star tires, about uh what four thousand miles on them five thousand miles or so stainless and bright work around the window is in nice shape i want to say this must have been a replacement glass at one point because you can see a little bit of old urethane probably from the molding uh being taken on and taken off but beautiful windshield this is uh, a sticker that was on the car when i sold it to him uh, Fraternal Order of Police, active member. That's dated 02. Vinyl top on this car is in phenomenal shape. You can see all the stitching is all present. Really, really clean top. Uh, top is just beautiful. And the top has probably got <laughs> enough 303 aerospace protected on it, but it's not like slimy. It's, it's very nice and dry. You know, it's not like Amarali where it gets greasy. It just looks beautiful. The color and the depth in the emblems, real nice. You can see the glass and the stainless. All the window sweeps are in really nice shape. Chrome as well on the mirrors are beautiful. Coming down the doors here. You know, just a couple little random chip there. A couple little guys right there. He also put these Cadillac uh, wreaths around the door lock um, cylinders. Kind of a common thing to see back then as a little accessory or upgrade. And the chrome, even on these handles, the stainless, nice and bright. Again, like I've said in past cars, signs of a garage car. And this car has been garage its whole life. You can see a few chips on this dog leg, common area, because the body starts to kind of jet out there. And then the road kick up. Uh, definitely chips that area there. And the original brome emblems, and these are the original rub strips down the side. Up a little minor chips there. Honestly, if you got a little bottle of this autumn maple and a touch up, and just you know kind of dabbed a couple of these little chips throughout, uh, you wouldn't even notice them. I believe these are the original fillers on this car. Nice and soft. Chrome taillight housing. You can see all the chrome trimming around the edges of the taillight are in beautiful shape. A couple little scuffs down there on the bottom of the chrome. I'll come up over the top of the deck lid. Beautiful paint again on the deck lid. There's one, 
little chip right there that was touched up at some point. A few little dust bunnies. Very, very nice paint on this car throughout. Again, the chrome. There is, looks like a little bit of paint peeling and cracking off this filler right here and the inside there. Cadillac 5.0 liter. The trunk reflectors. I think that was uh, 87, 88, 89. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Um, same with, you know, they did a few, you know, 80 to 89 was, I mean, the car was almost identical. You know, cars were identical every year, but little things they did change, like the trunk reflectors. The earlier ones had a chrome piece that went across here. Uh, the rub strips were different on the bumpers, so like the earlier ones had one single white line, uh, where these later ones had like a gray insert. You can see here the chrome on this car is in real nice shape. Uh, this center filler is in nice shape, and I, these definitely have to be original fillers in really good shape. Uh, a little bit of fading going on on the color of this silver one here, uh, but overall not bad shape. Chrome on the face bar is nice. A couple little uh, abrasions right there. Uh, sold new at Park Cadillac in New Milford, Connecticut. Whew. It is warm out today. It's only going to get warmer, too. The beautiful paint on the car. And again, top. Absolutely beautiful. Chrome is absolutely fantastic. I do like the stainless vent shades. It's a real nice touch to this car. Uh, you know, it's it's funny. This car is a perfect example of how color totally changes the look of a car. You know, if this car was tan or brown, you know, nothing against tan or brown cars. Little scuff right there. Um, but I just, I really like reds. I like blues. You know, I like the color cars, as you would say. Beautiful paint on this car. Mm. Again, emblems are in phenomenal shape. Top is beautiful. All the wire hubcaps. It had a little bit of a scuff mark right there on the stainless. You can see just a minor rub mark there. Now, I said in my first video that I did of this car that this car was kind of a weirdly optioned de elegance. And I still think it is uh, i'm going to show you a couple of those little oddities right there it looks like a little bit of a chip right there down the side again uh four-year-old tires about four or five thousand miles on them white walls little chip right there corner here a little paint chip out of the bumper strip uh so like i was just saying this car is kind of weirdly optioned for a DL. it's not not weirdly optioned just there's a few things missing in this car that you would think were standard and i soon realized that we're not in fact standard um one of those things being door edge guards this car did not come with door edge guards and in this era, they would have been the stainless steel style versus the 1992s where they were body colored. Um, so that's one thing that it didn't come with. Another thing that the car didn't come with is a power trunk pull down, which I'll show you um, when we open up the trunk. Uh, and then going back to my original video, the other two things that I thought were odd were the fact that it had a plastic wheel phenomenal beautiful plastic wheel i mean this thing is absolutely i don't even want to touch it it's so beautiful no cracks no missing wood inlay kind of odd for a day elegance usually they were leather wrapped uh, and then the original radio in this car was just an am fm radio it wasn't a cassette uh, obviously not a track by this time but usually they were cassette decks uh, and this car it didn't have that uh, so just kind of those little things I thought were kind of cool then and I still think are cool today. Um, <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Look at the paint. Look at the color. Look at the style. 
1987 Cadillac Rome. Let's take a look at the inside of this car, then we'll take it for a spin. Right, now we're going to dive onto the inside, but before I do, I just want to say thank you to all my uh, YouTube followers, all my Facebook followers, my Instagram followers, um, because this car, this is a car that keeps me humble. It reminds me where I started and now where I am. When I started, I had like five subscribers on my channel. I sounded like a used car salesman. Uh, you know, it just was a different time for me. And now here I am, you know, almost 70,000 YouTube subscribers, 15,000 Instagram followers, 10,000 Facebook followers. It humbles me that just showing these cars and showing you my day to day and doing stuff with my dad and all that stuff. It, you know, it's a reward to me, but it, it, I hear it from so many of my people that they appreciate seeing that stuff. And anyways, just keeps me humble. I also want to thank everybody for any of their merch purchases this weekend with our giveaway. That was great. Papa Ben, I say thank you very much. But anyways, I'm not going to ramble on too much. Let's get back on the inside of this Cadillac Rome. And diving right in, you will see miles of beautiful carmine red leather and interior and appointments. If you do not like red, this is not the car for you. If you don't like being noticed everywhere you go, this is also not the car for you. So I'll put those two disclaimers out there. If you want to blend with society, don't buy this car. Anyways, beautiful carmine red leather. Now, I don't get a lot of carmine red interior cars, and I wouldn't say it's my first pick. Maybe because it's not something I get often. But after driving this car and having this car back, I actually have a 1990 Brome De Elegance with 10,000 miles, same color combination, auto maple fire mist top with carmine red leather, 5.7 De Elegance. I bought that car like eight years ago. And eight years ago when I bought it, I put 50 miles on it. And I haven't put any on it since then. And just getting in this car with this red leather, it's just so 1980s Cadillac. Um, I need to get that car out. I need to do something with that car. Not sell it, so don't ask me. But I'm going to do something with it. Anyways, checking out the door jams here. Real clean, nice and clean. Threw out the jams on this car. Uh, a little bit of a chip, looks like missing right there on the top of this um on the top of this door hinge cover uh not uncommon to see this is a plastic panel here all the stainless and bright work throughout the car is in nice shape door gaskets nice and soft it does have a little split going on right here but aside from that maybe a little bit of wear starting right there but she's in real good shape all around uh, armrest, obviously beautiful, very, very, you got to be careful with stuff like this. You know, you start to see these things split open because people put their arm on them. Um, you got to treat these cars with the respect that they need at 35 years old. Uh, it's hard to believe that that's how old this car is. Uh, but beautiful interior trim, all the chrome bezels, uh, window switches, seat switches, door pull handles. All the weather stripping and sweeps, the chrome here, another common spot. These things can break, uh, all in great shape on this car. Dash pad, absolutely beautiful. Again, this is a tribute to being garaged, being cared for, not being driven hard. Same with the plastic wheel. I mean, there's no cracking whatsoever. Uh, even in the common spots, usually it splits on the bottom here, splits in these little um spots where you grab it with your hands you know all the trimming is in beautiful shape leather is absolutely soft and smooth in this car all the buttons are present you know there's no tearing or any kind of abnormal wear there it does have and this is common with these with the seat belts here obviously a car that's selling more the seat belt in all the time kind of beats up this chrome trim a little bit but uh, that's almost to be expected. Carpeting is in nice shape. A little bit of soiling or a little bit of wear right here on this uh, leading edge. And then down there where your left foot would probably rest. But overall, very, very nice. It's a 50-50 split bench with the two uh, armrests. Uh, new headliner was done. 
uh, back four years ago when I sold it uh, the last time. Open up the back door here. Again, gaskets, nice shape, nice and soft. Inside the jam, nice and clean. Coming up here. And all the bright work is real clean. Hinges area, and that's all nice. Again, the door panels are in great shape on this car. All the chrome poles, you know, little spot that I missed wiping off there, but all really, really nice. No splits or anything like that. Even the back um, seat trim here, not beat up. I mean, sometimes when people throw stuff in and out of the back seats of these cars, this trim starts to get a little beat up. Red package tray is a nice shape. Leather. I do like how these bromes have the uh, lap belts versus the 9092s where they have the shoulder belts. These uh, 80s versions with the lap belts and they retract so nicely into the seats. Carpeting nice and fluffy, just like you like. Even the uh, map back, uh, seat back map pockets are in nice shape, not all stretched out. Um, you know, something else you can kind of commonly see with these cars. Gasket, real nice. A little bit of, a little bit of fraying. And inside the jam, nice and clean. Let me expand this out a little bit. There we go. Seat backs. And that headliner. Has the pull handles, which is, I think that was an option too, or part of some brome package. It's weird to see the pull handles, but not a leather wrapped wheel. One thing I did notice is you can see this scratch in the leather in the center section here. Uh, it kind of goes from one side to the other. Not cut or torn, um, just kind of a scratch. Center armrest, folds down. Again, this one doesn't do that. that these ones aren't retractable lap belts, but nonetheless, all present and in beautiful shape. Carpeting, the fluff factor going on there. Real, real clean. Doors close nice on this car as well. Inside the jams. Real, real clean throughout this whole car. It's crazy how throughout the years they changed kind of like the design and weird little things like I've said before, like the wood tone. I like the wood tone of these cars. Um, this car, 1992s, where they had dual power seats. And I say if they had dual power seats because you could get a 1992 Brome without power passenger seat. Ask me how I know because my first one that I had when I was in high school was such a base 1990. I'm surprised it came with wheels and tires. It did not have a power passenger seat, didn't have a recliner at all, manual power, nothing. You, you could just slide it back and forth with a lever like you'd see in a Hyundai. Um, and I didn't know that. And I remember going to pick the car up and my best buddy still to this day gets in the passenger seat. He says, how do you adjust the seat? I said, oh, there's a switch up on the, oh. It was just like this where there was an ashtray here, you know, that flipped open. He's like, there's no switch. Looking on the side, no switch. Uh, this car has dual power with the tilt and a manual recliner, which I believe was also an option for these cars. Uh, most of the time, these did not have reclining seats. Uh, actually, on this car, I don't believe it has a, a reclining uh, driver's seat, and that's not uncommon to see, which is kind of crazy to think, uh, but not uncommon to see at all. Again, dashboard is in real nice shape. Real clean carpeting throughout. Has the litter bin. All right, let's jump behind the wheel. Show you some of the cool stuff there, and then we'll pop the hood, pop the trunk, take her for a spin. 
It's almost like a totally different color in the shade here. Gorgeous color either in the sun or in the shade. But look at that beautiful chrome on this car. All right, let's dive on in. All right, we're behind the wheel of this beautiful brome, and I like to show you what I got for keys. I have two sets of keys, one original gold set of keys, and then a perfectly color-coded aftermarket. Remember these old cold keys with the colored heads? I bet you can't even find stuff like that anymore. Uh, but we're gonna start her up. Now this is an Olds 307 carbureted five liter. Uh, standard equipment for 1987. There is no other option. Uh, so 86, they did away with the 4100s in these cars. Uh, all the way up till 89 where the Olds 507, uh, 307 was standard. Uh, then 1992, obviously they came out with the, or they introduced using the 350 5.7s and then the five liters in 91 and 92 was a 305. 90 was a carryover that still had this 307 for a five liter. I can see here I got all the books and manuals, um, original owner's manual, um, some of the uh, original pamphlets and stuff. Norris Wildman. Uh, of Gaylordville, Connecticut. I've never even heard of that town. Bought new 1223 right before Christmas, 1986. 18 miles at delivery. I think that's cool. Supplement book. Uh, so those come with it. We also have the uh, locking lug key here. It looks like it's a brown key. Let's see by the cap. Uh, this is just some of the stuff that Frank did to the car. Uh, he wanted to include that. One of the things that he did was in, installed this um, Bluetooth retro sound radio. Now, I said in the beginning of my video how I don't really care for aftermarket audiovisual equipment in cars, especially classics like this. But I have to say, this is the coolest radio because it looks factory. Bluetooth connectivity right to my phone. Don't have to plug anything in. It does have a cable bunched up here. Kind of comes out of the dash, but uh, to, to charge your phone or to connect it if you want to connect directly. But I essentially just put it on Bluetooth, hit retro sound. I can play my XM uh, through my XM app, Pandora. Uh, it's really, really cool. I have to say this is so cool that I'm actually looking into it for other bromes of mine. I don't think they have a setup for a 9092, but that looks so cool. He had some issues with the original radio. Um, after he bought the car, uh, he sent it out to have it serviced and it worked for a short period of time and then he went with this. Uh, so this is the Retrosound New York model and here are just some of the instructions here. Uh, but these are some of the little things that he did to the car. Uh, new battery, 1231-21. The old battery that came with the car was installed in January of 2017. We got a battery there. Um, I think he did an AC compressor. That's what this is. Yeah, Four Seasons AC compressor. I uh, did a limited entry module. But he used one there. Yep, and like I told you, this is a. Uh, we put new wreaths, uh, trunk wreaths, and that's actually cheap considering what these things are worth new today. Uh, and he also, I know he did an original, a new hood ornament. Uh, this is kind of cool. This was a write-up done uh, by a gentleman named Tom, who I'm, I'm really good friends with on uh, Facebook. I've met through the car groups. And this is one of the original pictures of this car when I sold it um, back then. And Tom did a write-up um, on this car for Haggerty. And I thought it was kind of cool. And I kind of actually almost a little forgot about it until I w was chumming through the, the glove box here. I saw... Um, Frank actually printed this out, um, you know, showing pictures of the car. Uh, but this just kind of gives you a breakdown of the history of the 1987 model year Brome. But those are the original pictures I had uh, when I sold this car the first time. So that comes with the car as well. Let's pop the hood and we'll hit that trunk popper. Now coming to the back here, I told you this car does not have a power pull down here. 
which is kind of weird for the elegance. It would be right here, that little black box. So there's really nothing you can do to modify it, but I think it's real cool that this car doesn't have it. It's like, kind of like an oddity. You just don't see that. Uh, we do have all four original floor mats. Uh, these are the reversible style floor mats, which I always thought was weird for Cadillac, especially since the driver's side is cut out for the gas pedal. For you to reverse the driver's side, I don't understand how they planned on you using that. Anybody can tell me in the comments below. I mean, how would you use that? It's not like the passenger side is cut out the same way. They do have a little reason, a little bit of, you know, a little heel mark here, um, wear on the carpets on the front, little minor little stain right there, but overall very nice. Uh, mini donut spare, which has never been on the ground. All the trunk carpeting and lining, the rear gasket here is in beautiful shape. All inside the trunk jams on both sides. Nice and clean. You can see the original lacquer tag there. Option code. So when you go to close it, you literally just close it like a regular trunk. There's no pull down. Uh, we'll jump up under the hood here. Bowles 307. I didn't go crazy in detail under the hood here because the car was so clean when it came in. And honestly, I don't really like cleaning the 307s because there's so many vacuum lines. You know, I just, I don't want to disturb anything. So this is how the car came back in the me. You can see there, brand new AC Delco, I believe. Oh no, Four Seasons AC compressor. Uh, but nice and clean throughout here. Die hard battery he installed, 12, 31, 21. All the fluids, car just had a, an oil change. Uh, she's basically ready to go. AC is nice and cold. You can see the under hood light. In great working order. All right, let's take Frank's Cadillac up on the highway for a spin. All right, we're gonna turn the air on. Ooh, we're gonna turn it on low so we can hear ourselves. We're gonna take this caddy up on the highway, back to the shop. We're gonna do a little undercarriage video of it as well uh, because I had it up on the lift and I wanted to show you. There we go, nice and cold. Just how we like it. Now, I'd like to hear your thoughts down in the comments um, on plastic steering wheels, plastic wheels versus the leather wrap, because I prefer these plastic wheels here. Um, I think these plastic wheels are just very old school Cadillac. You get that nice thin spoked steering wheel. Um, you know, it just kind of glides around on your hand when you let off. Um, but leather is obviously nice too, getting a leather wrapped steering wheel in 1987, that was kind of a luxurious thing. Um, my 1980 Fleetwood Brougham Coupe, since I've, I've had it, had a aftermarket leather wrap on it. And I thought it was kind of a weird feeling leather wrap. Well, come to find out, somebody wrapped up the plastic wheel, maybe from when it was new, because it had a mint wood or plastic wheel with the wood inlay here and i'm like i cut it off i'm like oh my god who would wrap a beautiful plastic wheel like this so let me know what you think down in the comments as far as the leather to plastic you know wood inlay wheel which one you prefer but here we are we're doing 60 they're not you can't this isn't a race car you know you mash it down i know i'm gonna get the comments oh it's an old 307 can, they're not race cars. Um, these are cruising cars. They get up to speed, can flick the cruise on, set the cruise, and she goes. Is she going to win races? Heck no. Uh, you know, that's just how these cars were. Like I said, they're not race cars. Even if you go out a 92 bro with a 5.7 in it, it's still not a fast car. So, you know, there's no need to bash these things in the comments. Like the 4100s, everybody bashed. Oh, they're gutless, they're powerless. You know what? Yes, they are. They don't go fast. You know, they can't fly by cars on the highway, but they cruise nicely. You know, if you got a nice running one, you keep it running nice and keep it maintained. Um, they're great cruising cars. And if you wanted a car of that era, that was really your only choice. Same with these 307s. So, 
I don't know why I have to f say it because I shouldn't have to, but in the, in the power of the internet and how internet gives everybody a voice, there's tons of people out there that always bash on anything they can bash on. North Stars, you know, Oldsmobile 307s, 4100s, and I get it, they had their issues back in the day, but here it is, we're 30 years later. You know, if you had a 307 or, well, not that they really had issues, these are great, reliable engines. If you had a 4100 back in the day, yeah, they had their issues with the cams and the head gaskets and whatnot. But 40 years later, you got a good running one, you got a good one. Anyways, that's just, I, I know there's going to be comments about that. So I figured I'd go off on a tangent. <laughs> Anyways, uh, any questions about this car, give me a call, 978-930-1004. Car is located here in Pelham, New Hampshire. You can go over to my website, specialtymotorcars.net, and check out all the still pictures of this car. Uh, like I said, you can go on my channel and you scroll way, 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 way up there. Uh, to my early years and you will find a video of this car that was back before I knew how to edit and clip things together and I did not really anything crazy on YouTube I really just gave you a real quick run around of the car and I realized how important that was um, for people online buying cars and I guess that's where it kind of took off so uh, anyways but I'll give you my normal spiel don't let distance stop you from getting a dream car like this in your driveway because I can have this car directly shipped right to your front door. Easy, I do it all the time. 978-930-1004, uh, Specialty Motor Cars NH on Instagram, Specialty Motor Cars on Facebook. That's where I have my sneak peeks. If you follow me on those two pages, you would have saw when I got this car in last week. This is all your first time on YouTube hearing about this car, uh, but I've had this car here at my shop for about a week or so getting it ready for sale and you would have known about that had you followed me on those two social media outfits um anyways price of this car $15,995 any questions like I said 978-930-1004 she's sitting pretty at 62,421 miles uh and uh yeah we, we're looking for a nice home for this car Frank you know I feel bad that he has to give up this beautiful brome, but it's given somebody another opportunity at owning this beautiful car. Um, and I think the least I can do for Frank is find him a loving, caring home. Someone who's gonna cherish this car, keep it in a garage, drive it, enjoy it, but collect it and love it nonetheless. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll talk to you on the next one. Let's get back to the shop here and show you what the bottom of this car looks like. All right, here's the bottom of the 1987 Cadillac Brome, 62,000 miles. Lower quarters, nice shape, original uh, tailpipe, I think, and resonator, yeah. Now, uh, this is a no level ride car. I don't believe it came with it because there's no actuator arm and there's no level ride shocks. I believe those are replacement shocks, but there's no level ride airlines or anything. So it tells me that it did not come with level ride. Like I said, this is a kind of an oddly optioned Brome de Elegance. The lines look good. Floor pans look good. You know, a little bit of surface rust here and there. Uh, this catalytic converter heat shield looks like it has some rust on the kind of the webbing there did just have a fresh oil change uh, there is some dampness on the bell housing cover and then you can see the oil pan is wet as well looks like a little bit of dampness around that plug front shocks must be replacements at some point yeah you can see a little bit of dampness there too Front end is all greased up. That is the 1987 Cadillac Brome de Elegance. 62,000 miles. Any questions? 978-930-1004. Give me a call.